Hey there, it's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks so much for checking out today's video where I'm going to be doing a short version of setting up your bullet journal. It's a hot topic coming out of workshop week that people are starting to get interested in planning and bullet journaling, but were really overwhelmed and confused on what it was. So I thought I'd do a quick express version today to tell you about all of the core pieces or collection pages in a bullet journal. Hopefully this short and sweet version will get you all of the main information that you need to know to feel confident in getting started for yourself. If you want a more elongated version, I'll go ahead and link some other videos that I think will be helpful for you in the descriptions below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We'll call it the Bullet Journal Express. Toot toot. Before we go ahead and get started inside of our journal, I just wanna let you know that in this video, I don't plan on moving fast, but I am going to move quickly. I'm going to just work at the same pace that I'm working here to explain the elements. If at any point you feel like I'm going too quickly for you, be sure to pause. You can go back a few seconds if you need to to rewatch to really make sure you understand it. I'm not going to be doing any design in this. This is really a quick and easy way to get yourself set up in your bullet journal today. So let's go ahead on the Bullet Journal Express and get started with our key. The key is going to be the language of your bullet journal. And these are all of the icons and signifiers that we're going to use throughout this entire bullet journal. The first one here is going to be your bullet. This is your dot, and this is going to be your task or action. This is the thing that you need to actively do. That's going to get that bullet. If it's not something that you have to do or action on, then you're going to draw yourself a dash here, and that's going to be a note. Sometimes it can be a note under a task. For instance, if I need to email Joe back about the latest designs, that's an action that I need to do, but maybe the note on here is for myself, and for that I just need to remember that this is for the latest email that's going out. You can just connect it however you need to. This could also be for a random thought that you have throughout the day. Maybe it's a website that you saw, something that you wanna get back to. It doesn't always have to be related to your task. The next thing is going to be an open circle, and this is going to be for an event. Events can be a lot of different things. This could be for meetings during your day. This could be appointments that you have, doctor, dentist, meeting with somebody. This could also be a significant event that happens in your life. These could be promotions. You could be getting married. It could be someone's birthday. The event can be for anything. It doesn't just have to be for a meeting or something along that line. These next two are going to be things that we're going to talk about in just a bit, and that has to do with migration. The first symbol that we're going to use is going to be this left facing carrot. And this left one is the first one we're going to use for migrating something back. In just a moment, we'll talk about the future log, which is one of the core pages of the bullet journal. And you'll most often use this when migrating something back to the future log. That's how I like to remember it. The other one you're going to use is a right facing carrot. And this is something that you are going to migrate forward. Most often, you're going to migrate something forward if it's a task or something that you didn't complete in that day or that week, and you're going to move it to the next day and just say, you know what, I didn't get this accomplished today, so I'm going to move this and prioritize this for the next day or for the next week. The next thing is going to be an exclamation point, and this means this needs attention. You're usually going to use this with a task that absolutely needs to get done. I use this often for anything that's, you know, I have to email somebody back today, something is due on a certain day, the exclamation point lets me know, do not ignore this, this is not something that needs to be migrated. Once you're done with a task and you complete it, you're going to cross that out, and that means that your task is done, and you don't have to worry about it. And sometimes you're going to have tasks that no longer have to be complete, and you're just going to draw a line through that. And this is the main language that you're going to need to know to start inside of your bullet journal. Everything else that we create is going to go inside of here. I only put something like this on a post-it note because as you're learning, this is the best way, in my opinion, to make sure and remind yourself daily until you build the muscle memory on these. I'm a little bit through this notebook. This is one of my spare notebooks that I put ideas into, but I'm going to set this up as if we have opened the first page of our notebook here. Usually this page here is going to be where you put your name on the other side, and then this will be your first blank page. If your journal is not already numbered, I'm going to have you number your pages as we go along, and you're going to start with the number one on the right-hand side. 
This first page that you're going to make here is going to be your index. And I'm just going to write that header up here at the top. The index is the brain of this operation. Everything that goes into the rest of your journal, this is why the page numbers are really important, you're going to bring back to your index because that's how you're going to find it again. If you've ever used a notebook in the past that hasn't had an index or you've never used it, you know, it's like someone's like, oh, remember that meeting that you had, uh, that we had, that we wanted to talk about and you're trying to flip feverishly <laughs> through it to find it? Now you're going to document that in your index and easily be able to find that as you go through through. As we go through this, I usually don't skip pages inside of my bullet journal for anything because it's hard to know how many pages you're going to need. However, I do end up using about three pages of an index whenever I use my bullet journal. So what I'll have you do is number the pages number two and number three, and this is going to be your index. So this is the first thing that we're going to put over here. We're going to write in, well, this says index for the header, but we're gonna write it again here just to mark that the index is on page one through three. The way that the index starts to work is, and you can do this any way that you want. This is just the way that I've always done it. I put the topic over on the left-hand side, and then next to that, I put the page numbers. And for some of these pages, I leave a lot of space. And the reason I do that is because not everything inside of your journal is going to be sequential. So you might have things on page one and two, and then by the next time you come back to another page, it might be further along. So you wanna leave as much room as you can over here. The next thing that we're going to set up is going to be our future log. And this is going to be on page four and on page five. The way that I like to set up my future logs is usually not more than about six months at a time. The way that you're going to do this is just easily split your page into three if you want to. There's a few ways you can do that. You can count the number of squares that you have here and then divide it by three and you'll know how many you're going to need for each one of these. So I'll start here at the top and count down 12 and I'm just going to put some lines here and do the same thing down. The reason I'm doing this is that there's nothing for me to plan for in the month of September now, because all of that will go inside of my monthly page, which we're going to go through. So we're going to start in October. The next one will be November and December. This is where most people start to freak out because they're like, wait a second, why am I setting up my bullet journal to cover two years inside of here? And that's because we don't like to waste paper over here on Men Who Bullet. We've got January here. We've got February here, and we've got March. The way that you use your future log here is you're going to go ahead and use these different tasks and notes and things like that to set things up. So this is our future log on page four and five. So we're going to go back to the beginning of our index here, and we're going to write in future log. And we're gonna put page four and five here. So that is done. So now we're going to go over to page six and page seven. This is going to be our monthly overview. So because we are planning ahead and we have our future log starting in October, then we're going to set this up here in September. Here's how your monthly page looks. At the very top, you're going to write your month. I'm going to mark that it's 2021. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to write the day of the week and the date vertically all the way down your page. This is where your phone or a calendar comes in handy just to make sure that you're doing this correctly as you go through. We're going to start here at the very top and September starts on a Wednesday. So we're going to do Wednesday the 1st and then I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of this. So do it along with me. Depending when you're starting your bullet journal, you wanna start this off for the month that you're beginning using this, or if you're already in a month, set it up now. There is no right time to start a bullet journal. You could literally be halfway through the month of September and you would still wanna set up this page for everything else that's going on. That's going to cover you over here for September. Some things that I often like to do with my monthly pages is I have the room over here for any type of dates or events or anything that I might need to accomplish during this week. I do like to keep an open notes and task section here and I just like to do a brain dump for the month. So often I'll just write tasks and notes. 
A brain dump is a wonderful mental activity where you just take everything that's inside of your brain and you just dump it out on the page. This is where your key is going to become very important because as you're doing that, you're going to notate what that is. Is this a task, something that I need to do? Is this a note, just something that I need to remember but not necessarily take action on? Is there an event that's going on? And it doesn't need to be in sequential order. You are going to put it in order as you put things over on this left-hand side or move these over into your weekly. So this is September over here, task and notes on page six and seven. So we're gonna go back over to our index and we're going to write that in. September, 2021, and that's page six and page seven. That's gonna set you up for September. Now we're going to move into our daily pages. If you're going into September and we're gonna start this on September 1st, then that's what you're going to write on your very first daily page. It's going to be September 1st. And the rest of this page is blank. And you're like, Mark, but there's an entire week here. What do I do with this? This is a daily log. We don't know how much space we're going to need on September the 1st. You might end up using two or three pages. That's rare to do, but some people do it. Usually you're going to use about half or maybe a little bit less than that. You're gonna write notes, you're going to doodle, you're going to figure out whatever it is that you have to do throughout the day. So I go through my entire day and everything's good to go. I started my day by checking my email. I ended up emailing Sue Ann as I needed to with all of these details. And I also paid the electric bill. But I didn't get to wash the dog. And that's okay, because tomorrow is a brand new day. It's September the 2nd, and it's a Thursday, and I'm going to migrate this to my next day because I don't want to leave undone tasks in previous days. So I'm going to start my day by reminding myself that I need to wash the dog. One of the things that I get out of Bullet Journal is the repetition of writing things. It's not that you want to keep writing things all the time. You actually want to accomplish your task, but sometimes writing it a few times is going to put it inside of your brain and remember that you have to get that done. So you go through the rest of this week here and we're gonna write out just a handful of more notes. I don't wanna go through like an entire week because that would take much longer than this Bullet Journal Express video <laughs> that we talked about doing here. And uh, I'm just going to put in here an event not a task, for a birthday dinner for my brother Joe. And we're going to be doing that on October 31st, which just happens to be Halloween. I go through my day. I finally wash that dog. This isn't a task that I'm going to do anytime soon. This is next month, and I don't need to worry about that. And I don't want to have to repeat and write this from now until October 31st. So this is a good example to show you when you're going to move something and migrate it back to the future log. We migrated this forward to the next day. So we're going to migrate this event back to the future log. So what I'm going to do is go back into my future log. I'm actually gonna come back to my index in just a minute because I need to know where that is. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and put that event that we're going to have, and that's going to be Joe's birthday dinner on the 31st. And then I can come back over here and I can mark that. It's probably what you would want to do first. So let's go ahead. This is page eight and page nine. Let's go ahead and just do this by here right now and just say that we are going to do September 1st through the 2nd is going to be on page eight. So that's what we have here. And this is all that you need for your bullet journal. Now there are some other types of things that you can add inside of here. Some people like to do mood trackers or reminders. They like to do trackers for working out and things like that too. And I've got a lot of other ideas and bullet journal ideas for you inside of a playlist. You'll check it out above. I'll also put the link to it in the descriptions below. But this is everything that you're going to need to get started inside of your bullet journal nice and quickly. 
Hopefully you like that short and sweet version of getting started with your bullet journal as I just covered those basics today. If you're interested in a longer version of this, I'll go ahead and pop a card up here for you to check out one of my longer form videos where we really go in deep on each part of what we talked about today. It's another great video and that's actually set up inside of a line journal instead of a dot grid journal because it doesn't matter where you actually set up your bullet journal at the end of the day. It's all about you and what you need from it. I also just started up a brand new newsletter. So if you're interested in getting more tips and tricks around planning, bullet journaling and organization, you can sign up in the description below as well. I'll link that there for you. I'm also going to be sending out freebies throughout the year and overall just updates on what's happening. I love to get information out to you because there's just so much good stuff happening, whether it's with this channel, whether it's freebies or even cool stationary reviews as well. You know me, I love some stationary. So thanks again for checking out today's video and I'll talk to you very soon. See ya. Happy planning.